Okay. Please take a deep breath and exhale all our tension and expectations. <laughs> and then just relax. And, and we just reflect. Now during this a week the teachings on the jewel ornament of liberation um, the, right from the beginning to the now we have come to the buddhahood <clears throat> so during this time the, the teachings step step by step how skillfully uh, now taught us so, so that we turn our mind from samsara to the Buddhahood, how much it makes sense, just see, you know, how much suffering is there in the world and the cause of suffering. Now we can see more clearly. You know. So, seeing this, we are now inspired to follow the Buddha's teaching. We are not as a Buddhist, as a mission, but we are seek, seeker, peace, happiness. We are looking to how to free from suffering. You know? So with mind of the altruistic thought, I will follow this path to attain complete Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. So we cultivate such uh, mind. Now, uh, what here we have is the part five, which the seventies this morning has mentioned. There are six primary uh, topics. Uh, so Buddhahood, this is the result, the part five, the result result is the body of the perfect Buddhahood. And uh, you know, when it comes to the chapter, it's chapter 21, perfect Buddha. This uh, uh, describes briefly in the uh, refuge section. Basically in the refuge section, it gives us uh, how to take refuge. What means taking refuge? what all the process step by step uh, different types of refuge uh, so describe these important points uh, to uh, to free from samsara now here perfect buddhahood the result now we learn who is buddha so what's qualities and abilities the Buddha has. Thus, one attains the perfect Buddhahood of the three Kayas by completely passing through all the paths, the five paths, and the ten Bhumis. The length for the, for the path to enlightenment, Adisha says, the enlightenment of a Buddha is not too far away. It's not full, not too far away it means as, as we went through the five paths and the ten bumis when we go step by step and then when you reach to those uh, last stages then the Buddhahood is not far, it's within you. you know, it's all mental journey. You know? um, the, you see, progressing our mental development step by step. Just for example, you know, the alphabet A, B, C, there's 26 syllables. When you learn first 26 syllables, you know, A, B, C, like this. So this 26 syllable is the basic until to graduate PhD, see, first you learn how to know the 26 syllables, how to pronounce, 
then how to make sentences how to read this all the tenses uh, grammars step by step then you know, the uh, kindergarten uh, elementary school high school college phd how high you go still abc 26 syllables you see no matter how much you make a uh, hard sentences big vocabularies it's a bombastic vocabularies you know still 26 syllables you see you never lost the basic see so we start from the basic so don't think 26 syllables are ordinary unnecessary you know <laughs> so right from the beginning like the subject of impermanence causality you know suffering of samsara so goes all the way to buddhahood you become you become buddha why still you are not perfected the path to free from suffering not perfected to understand the causality not not perfectly understood about the impermanence until when one becomes the buddha so in the first chapter there see uh, here we are By what reasoning can it be shown that sentient beings have Buddha natures? Because all sentient beings are pervaded by the emptiness of Dharma Kaya. In regarding to that or relation to this, because the perfect form of Buddha radiates. See? To explain the first reason, all sentient beings are pervaded by the emptiness of Dharmakaya, means that the ultimate Buddhahood is Dharmakaya. Dharmakaya is all pervading emptiness, and the emptiness pervades all sentient beings. Therefore, all sentient beings are of the Buddha nature. How to see? To see that that who we are in the state of the, the Buddha nature, you no, know, primordially in an unfabricated nature that which is a mode of abiding. You know. So to uh, to understand what this point is, now here we have thus the summary of Buddhahood is nature, significance of the name, classification, definition, definite number, characteristics, and special traits. These seven comprise the kayas of the complete perfect Buddha. So basically Dhammakaya. You know? So now when you when we understand here this Buddhahood the state of the Buddha, then we understand that quality is within us. You know? uh, in other words, to reveal this which we have within us, then we need to see the Buddha, so then where we take refuge, so you know, we learn you now Who's the Buddha? No. To, who, to whom we are taking refuge? So through these basic seven topics, we can understand roughly what's, what is the Buddha? Who is the Buddha? Now next, the, uh, the first one, the nature of Buddha. Nature, the... Uh, so what means buddha i see the nature of the nature of a complete perfect buddha is uh, the, perf the perfect purification and perfect primordial wisdom just two perfection 
the first perfect uh, purification means see, the two obscurations of afflicting emotions. So one first obscuration uh, which obstruct us to free from samsara and obscuration to knowledge which means it's great obstacle to attain Buddhahood. So both of those two were suppressed on the Bhumis. They are purified step by step on the ten Bhumis and five paths. And right at the Vajra-like absorption at the end of the tenth uh, Bhumi, you know, they are fully abandoned without remainders, no any leftover, completely purified. So those called the adventitious obscurations, the obscurations to equipoise and so forth are included in these two obscurations. There can be uh, many names of different obstacles or obscurations. So all these obscurations are included into these two obscurations. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by purifying these two, of all obscurations are abandoned. So that's the purification. Or in other words, realizing all the nature of the emptiness of phenomena. Mm -hmm. Now the second uh, perfect primordial wisdom, that means there are different opinions about the Buddha's primordial wisdoms. Some believe that Buddha possesses discursive thought as well as primordial wisdom. Some say that Buddha, you know, um, Buddha does not possess the discursive thought but does possess primordial wisdom, which is very clearly aware, uh, which clearly aware of everything that Buddha aware. Others say that the continuity of the primordial wisdom be seized. Some say that the Buddha never had primordial wisdom, so forth. Anyhow, before we go all the details, the Buddha's wisdom is fully accomplished. And there are two wisdoms. Wisdom knowing everything as it is, which means both the nature of samsara and nirvana equally in the sphere of the emptiness. No? Therefore, inseparable of samsara nirvana. So Buddha has captured that wisdom. Within this state, then all the different manifestations of the causalities of the past and future at present, everything, no? say so Buddha perceived precisely, without mistake. That is called Buddha knowing everything, omniscient, knowing all, uh, knowing all the knowledge. So this is the uh, perfection of the wisdom. So that means blossom to all the knowledge. So that's the nature of the Buddha. Uh, please look at page 286, Milarepa's position. So there are different scholars, they, dis they describe their own way according to the different texts, both sutra and the commentaries. But here Milarepa's position is so direct, so Kapupa is quoting here. Chizun Mila means Milarepa's position regarding primordial wisdom. He said, this unfabricated, our mind which is unfabricated, 
that's the Buddhist Buddha mind. <coughs> Awareness is beyond words, conceptual thoughts, such as existence or non-existence. Look at your own mind, you know. This exists where? Not exist, you are thinking a lot. So, existence or non existence, eternalism or nihilism, and so forth. See, uh, it will not be contradicted. Whatever name is used to express it, you can say in one way it's not exist, another way you can say it is exist, depending to the subject. So, it's an, it cannot be contradict. Primordial wisdom is also like this. Those who would be expected to be scholars, even if they ask the Buddha himself. Say, you ask Buddha whether Buddha's primordial wisdom is exist or not exist. So, I don't think he, Buddha, would say one way or the others. Dhammakaya is, because it's, you know, Dhammakaya is beyond conception. Its nature is unborn, free from elaboration, see. Don't ask me, just look at your mind. Indicates that there is no special opinion in Milarepa system. I mean, Milarepa system is not this or that. It's in non-duality state, see? it's expressing. Therefore, the nature of the Buddha is perfect purification and perfect primordial wisdom. Unsurpassed Tantra says, Udra Tantra, Buddhahood is in, indivisible, cannot divide it. Yet, one can categorize it according to its qualities of purity. The two qualities of Primordial wisdom and freedom uh, comparable to the sun and the moon. And the ornament of Maya Sutra says, the seed of the obscurations of afflicting emotions and obscurations of knowledge, although presented for a long time, uh, are fully uprooted and purified. Uh, purified by renunciation, renounce all the negativities, obscurations. Buddhahood is possessed by those with excellent, virtuous qualities. So this is the nature of the Buddha, that our mind is fully awakened. Then, you ask the significance of the name, I mean Buddha, what means name Buddha? Um, why is one called Buddha? One who is fully awakened. So in Tibetan, you know, Sangye. So Buddha, in Sanskrit, it has two meanings. Buddha means purification, Buddha means fully awakened. Both meaning are within that, like body, no? Uh, Bodhisattva in the body, Buddha, see those two meanings. So in the translation of Jesus in Sangye we have, you see, um, fully awakened from ignorance, as from sleep and from sleep, when he was sleeping, were completely now just like a dead. No any idea what's happening around. When you awake from sleep, then you see everything what's around you. You see precisely. So awaken this color. You know? And then next is color fully blossomed yeah. the discriminating wisdom into the two knowledges is called a Buddha no the purification and 
blossom to all the knowledge. So as mentioned, it's not just mere empty, but emptiness allow us to purify all the obscurations when we practice it. You know, the gross and subtle obscurations are, can only purify by realization of the emptiness. But then when we purified all the obscurations, then wisdom is blossomed, flourished. You know? so, mm, Buddha, thus it is said, because of having awakened from the sleep of ignorance, Buddha, and having blossom, blossomed the discriminative wisdom, Buddha, into the two knowledges, he is called Buddha. Uh, awakened from the sleep of ignorance, it is the perfect purification as described earlier before. Blossom the discriminating wisdom into the two knowledges, knowing as it is and knowing everything, means the perfection of the primordial wisdom, as was explained before. And then uh, next is a uh, classification. Um, when you classify, say. How many Buddha's bodies there? So Buddha's form, fo Buddha's form are classified as three: Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and the Nirmanakaya. The Golden Light Sutra says all the Tathagatas possess three forms: Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. <coughs> Now there are different uh, uh, assertions, you know, different way of explaining Buddha's body, you see. Some scriptures, some texts, sutra and commentaries mentioned two forms. So Buddha has two forms, uh, Dhammakaya and Rupakaya. Uh, the Dhammakaya and, and the form body. And even four, or some texts mention Buddha as four bodies, Dhammakaya, Sambhokaya, Nirmanakaya, Swabhavikakaya. And then, or five forms, some say there's a five, Buddha has five bodies above this four, the, the great joy, bliss body. Mm -hmm. Even though they say, and they say that, so even though these different scriptures and uh, commentaries explain many different ways, mm -hmm. all the forms are included in, uh, under three uh, under these three, due to reason, here all this Buddha's body are included into these three. See? The ornament of Mayana Sutra mentions one should understand that all forms of the Buddha are included in the three, in this three. Now, definition of these three kayas. Dhammakaya is the identity of the actual Buddha. So Dhammakaya is the Buddha, what we call Buddha. You know? It's very important to see. That is the real Buddha, Dhammakaya. Yeah. <clears throat> the 8,000 stanza perfection of wisdom says one should not see the Buddha as the form bodies, Sabhokaya, Nirmanakaya, form bodies. The Tathagata Buddha is Dharmakaya. Um, the king of the medita uh, meditative absorption sutra says, Samadhi Raja Sutra mentions one should not see the victorious one Buddha 
as the form bhati. So now this is very important, you know. We take refuge in the Buddha Dharmakaya. No. See, there are sometimes you see uh, temples are destroyed, Buddha statues are broken, you know, and sometimes they last in uh, what? What was this? They say in in April or something in Nepal. There's a big earthquake, isn't it? that time a lot of temples are destroyed and some because of this Buddha's head are destroyed some Buddha hands are not there no so statues are broken now you see carefully look no if we take refuge the statues <laughs> no. now statues are broken now what you should do and they will say, look, it is your Buddha, you know. <laughs> you are making every offerings, you know, so much you spend money. And uh, now, so you are st what the, 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 taking refuge, you hold your body, speech, man, you take refuge to Buddha. The, even Buddha, now he's gone, you know. Now, who will protect you, see? It's very important. Sometimes, some we, you know, go to the, uh, this what uh, stupas, no built big stupas, very important historical is such, such a build so precious and all these things. things. And sometimes Artugi comes destroyed. Now, what you do? What you feel? If somebody says you look now, you took refuge, you know all these things. Now, poor Buddha, you know, <laughs> see. So because of this, so these are just uh, what you call support for our meditation, reminding that this is a Buddha, no? this is Stupa. Stupa represents Buddha's wisdom minds. Statue represents Buddha's body. The actual way to take refuge in the Buddha Dharmakaya. See, Dhammakaya cannot be destroyed by any means. Oh. So how it makes important. At the refuge section also they mentioned the ultimate refuge is Buddha Dharmakaya. No. Oh. Because Buddha is Dharmakaya. Dhammakai is a profession of the Dharma practice. Dhammakai is the ultimate Sangha. Great Bodhisattvas, they made journey towards the enlightenment at Buddhahood, Dhammakaya. So Dhammakaya is the embodiment of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, all together. That never cannot be destroyed by any composite phenomena. It's all pervading, unborn, no? free from elaboration, free from contrive, fav fabrication. So this is why we need to study practice Dharma, you see. Otherwise, go to the statue and we worship, you know. And the statues fall on your head, then what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so you can practice Dharma anywhere, everywhere. With the statue, without statue. So that's why I say, when you start to practice Dharma, when you realize some kind of uh, emptiness, so then it has immeasurable benefits. Oh. If you talk to others, this kind of subject, 
is the real how to free from samsara. Because Buddha Shajamuni, he said, when I was achieved at the Bhumi, then uh, Buddha, what? Uh, Kashapa, the last Buddha, Kashapa, precise me to, to be next Buddha Shakyamuni. Because he realized emptiness perfectly at that time. And because of relationship to emptiness, which is the nature of the Dhammakaya, then Buddha Kashapa said, you will attain, you will become Buddha Shakyamuni. Next. So we become Buddha by the realization of the emptiness, the wisdom. That's our mind. That's why we study, practice. Bodhicitta is the Bodhicitta is the consummate no, method for the realization of the Dhammakaya. So therefore, because of this reason, we can achieve the state of, of this fearlessness. Buddha said, if you take refuge to Buddha Dhamma Sangha, you will achieve the fearlessness. What means fearlessness? By taking refuge to the statue, how you can achieve the fearlessness? By taking refuge to the Dhammakaya, then we can achieve the the attended state of the fearlessness. So that's why I say, oh, why we now way which we take refuge is very important to know. No? Uh, then uh, the two forms body should be understood to manifest through the combination of of these three so we should uh, then we may ask how then the Sambhokaya and Narmanakaya manifest or uh, be in that way uh, so it is interdependent due to many causes conditions come together and uh, in order to benefit sentient beings Buddha uh, manifests those basically those two forms. Uh, see, the basic their foundation of the manifestation is out of Dharmakaya. See, and then mm, they 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 are seen. Uh, by the uh, individual practitioners, uh, so the the individual practitioners, when they have enough positive karma, uh, uh, yes, when they purify their negative obscurations, then these individuals can get chance to see. Buddha's body, Sambhokaya or Nirmanakaya. And also, Buddha manifest in the form of those because Buddha have perfected Bodhicitta. Because Buddha cultivated Bodhicitta to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. So by the combination of these three, Dharmakaya and the, uh, the, uh, the degree of the uh, individual Dharma practitioner and the perfection of the aspiration, the Bodhicitta practice. Mm -hmm. Then there we have that said definition, definite number. Why? There's a three number is counted here. As earlier mentioned, you know, uh, even though there's two forms, four forms, five forms, but in this book, why is the three?
tree. No. That is just reason is a Dharma practitioner who follows the path step by step. And at the end of the boomies or the path, when one fully actualize Dharma Kaya, total no pervasive free from elaborated nature of the emptiness then one call become one call is buddha so when one attains buddhahood all the exceptional all the qualities yeah without exception she said ah now experient or obtained like the ten strength of the Buddha, the four fearlessnesses, eighteen unmixed, so forth. So that's for oneself to perfect, you know, uh, to perfect all the qualities. Oneself is free from suffering and achieve the ultimate result for this Siddhamakaya. And uh, then a great Bodhisattva practitioner who, who are highly accomplished on the Bodhisattva's Bhumi for those for their benefit Buddha manifests Sambhogakaya. Oh. And then for ordinary people who has no opportunity to see Buddha Sambhogakaya of course, Dhammaka is a long way to, to benefit those individuals, then Buddha manifests Nirmanakaya. So for those three reasons, so Buddha explained the three kayas. Then number 16. Characteristics of the three kayas. Um, Namakaya first. Namakaya is merely labeled as the exhaustion of all errors through realization of the meaning <coughs> of the all pervading <coughs> emptiness of all phenomena, <coughs> as in the first chapter. See our confusion, <coughs> samsara, nature of samsara is emptiness. Its mental projection is confusion. Oh. And because of this the confusion, that it characterizes suffering. Oh. So now that confusion, the error, you see, the confusion is totally exhausted, dissipated. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's called all-pervading emptiness of all phenomena. Or as the mere reverse of the nature of the confused projection. Means, in other words, the mental formation of confusion is now not exist. Mm -hmm. In reality, it does not possess any way whatsoever the identification. There's no way to identify what Dhammakaya is, characteristics, or the designation of the Dhammakaya. We cannot point say, this is Dhammakaya. It's a state of the enlightened, free from all fabrication. This is just as Milarepa said. Mm -hmm. But just to get some glimpse of understanding for the Dharma practitioners, if, if expressed from another angle, then Dharmakaya has eight characteristics. Just to have a glimpse. Sameness, profundity, permanence, oneness, perfection, purity, radiance, and relationship 
to enjoyment means sabogaya. First, sameness, there is no difference between the Dhammakaya of all Buddhas, all the Buddhas of the past, present, future. <clears throat> Dhammakaya has no difference. Like the sky of the, or space, or sky of the east, west, north, south. Or the past, future. Profundity, because it is free from all elaboration, it is difficult to realize. Profound means not easy to realize. It takes a lot of energy, perseverance to really penetrate that nature. That's what called it's profound. Permanence, it is not compounded. It is not compound, it has no beginning, middle, or end. It is free from birth and cessation. So it's called permanence. It's not something permanent, substance exists. It nature itself is unchanging. Oneness, it is indivisible because Dhammatatu and the primordial wisdom cannot be differentiated. Dhammatatu the object of the Dhammadhatu, what to realize. And Dhammakaya is the one who realized that. So we say subject and object, but in reality, when the Dhammadhatu is fully realized, there's no differentiation. They cannot be divided. Mm -hmm. So it's called indivisible. It's one nature. Purity, it is free from, free from the three obscurations. The obscurations of the men, uh, uh, mental afflictions, free from the uh, obscuration of the subtle uh, uh, obscuration, free from the obscurations of the meditation. Uh -huh. uh, radiance, there are no discursive thoughts, only non-conceptual thoughts and projected in the non-conceptual state. So radiance means completely free from all the obscurations. The expression of that excellent qualities is infinite, is radiant. Relationship to enjoyment Embodying the nature of the vast good qualities, it is the foundation of the complete enjoyment body, Sampokakaya. Because Sampokakaya, the Buddhas, Sampokakaya is there. Buddhist Atwas who are eight, even tell the Bumi when they see Buddha Sampokakaya, they get the inspiration to attend Buddhahood because it expresses infinite qualities of the Buddha Dhammakaya. <coughs> the answer pass Tantra, Uttara Tantra says, beginningless, centerless, and endless. No beginning, no center, no end. Completely indivisible, free from the two obscuration, two extremes mm -hmm. and free from the three obscurations stainless and concept free such is the Dharma Dhatu understanding of its nature is vision of the yogin who abide in meditation this yogin is yogin Buddha uh, not some other practitioners Buddha, who is the one who fully captured this nature. The ornament of Mayana Sutra says, nature body is this nature body means Dhammakaya. It's sameness, subtle, and related to enjoyment, Sambokaya. Uh, Nirmanakaya, Nirmanakaya also has added characteristics basis, cause, fill, time, nature, 
engaging, maturing, and liberating. Basis, it basis is Namakaya, which is unmovable. See, so some Nirmanakaya nature is Dhammakaya, but from Dhammakaya it manifests as Nirmanakaya. Cause it arises from the great compassionate wish to benefit all sentient beings because the perfection of the bodhicitta. Filled, its fields are fully pure and fully impure filled. So fully pure field means to the bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas can also perceive, can see the Nirmanakaya. Impure field means those like us, the ordinary individuals can see Buddha Nirmanakaya. Time, it is unceasing for as long as the world exists. Oh, so see, Buddha once enlightened and then passed away, say, took Pari Nirvana, the people think it's not, Buddha is not exist. But in reality, Buddha's manifestation continues until the end of the samsara. Nature, it manifests in the three forms. The art, artistic emanation uh, is ex, ex, uh, exert, expert in all the various arts such as playing the flute and so forth. Uh, the birth emanation manifests various inferior bodies like a rabbit and so forth. The superior emanation descends from Tushita, heaven, enters the mother's womb, and so forth, until it passes into Parinirvana, like two twelve deeds. Um, the ornament oh, Parinirvana. The ornament of Mayana Sutra says, the emanation body of Buddha is a great method for for full liberation, which manifests consistently as an artist, uh, engineering, say, birth, and great enlightenment, and parinirvana. Um, the answer passed by Tantra, uh, Tantra, this is the Uttar Tantra says, here explains the 12 deeds of the Buddha. Through various forms, uh, appreciated by nature, the one excellently born into the highest birth, descend from the realm of the great joy. This great joy is the Tushita, Monga. Enters the royal womb and is noble born on earth, perfectly skilled in every science and craft. Delight in his royal consort, accompanied uh, renouncing, enduring hardship, going to the place called Enlightenment, Vajra Heart, Bodhgaya. He vanishes the host of Mara, defeats all the Maras, then perfect enlightenment. He turns the wheel of the Dharma and passes into Nirvana in all those, place, <coughs> those places. So impure, the Nirmanaka shows shows these deeds as long as world endures until the end of samsara. Uh, engaging uh, number six means it induces a variety of ordinary beings, anybody who are ordinary, not enter into the path to engage in the inter entering the path by creating interest in the three types of nirvana, Saravaka, Pratik Buddha, Bodhisattva, or Buddha Nirvana. Oh, has encourage follow the path. Then next is a maturing. It fully matures all the accumulations of those who have entered the path. So those individuals who followed enter into the path, then give opportunity to purify the obscurations and train the mind step by step. 
liberating. It liberates those who are fully matured by virtue from the bondage of existence. Then the, uh, that Buddha Nirvana caused those individuals to achieve the so, Sharavaka's Arhat, Partik Buddha's Arhat, Buddhisattva's Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. uh, from the bondage of existence. You know. The unsurpassed Tantra says, Uttara Tantra, these form causes beings to enter into the path of Nirvana and become fully matured. These are the eight characteristics of Nirmanakaya. The ornament of clear realization says, Abhisama Alankara, the impartial activities of body, is it activities say, manifest to every sentient beings that who needs the unceasing nirmanakaya of the sage variously benefit all sentient beings as long as samsara exists. How number seven special uh, traits or special difference. Uh, there are three special traits or difference of Buddhahood. These three Buddha, Dharmakaya, Sambhokaya, Nirmanakaya. Equality, permanence, and appearance. Uh, first, the special traits of equality, difference of the equality. The Dharmakayas of all Buddhas are inseparable from their basis, their nature. That is Dharma Datu, because of Dharma Kayas are based on Dharma Datu, so it's inseparable. Therefore, they are equal. Sambo Kayas of all Buddhas, past, present, future, in all directions, are inseparable in their realization of the Buddhahood. Therefore, they are equal. Nirmanakai of uh, Nimakas of all the Buddha's manifestation common in the uh, manifest equally common needs of the sentient beings, so common activities. Therefore, they are equal. So they are different, but the common, you know, how they are equal. The ornaments of Mayana Sutra says they are equal in basis, realization, and activities. Second, the special traits of permanence. Dhammakaya is by nature permanent, by nature unchanging, because it is ultimate state free from birth and cessation. Mm -hmm. Sambhokaya is permanent because of its continuous enjoyment of the Dharma until end of the samsara. Mm -hmm. Nirmanakaya is permanent because of the activities which it manifests again and again unto end of samsara. Mm. Even though it disappears like Buddha Shajamuni was born and took the pari nirvana. But even though the stream of continuity uh, uh, so, yeah, is continuously ceases, it appears without missing any opportunities. The ornament of Mayana Sutra says, these are the permanent by nature, Dharmakaya, unceasing continuity, Sambhokaya, and by continuity of action, the Nirmanakaya. Third, the special uh, trait, uh, trait or the difference of appearance, Dharmakaya appears uh, through the purification of obscurations of knowledge in the Dharma Datus, means when one becomes Buddha, then the Dharma Datu uh, and Dharmakaya is appeared or fully realized. <laughs> Sambhokaya appears through the purification of afflicting emotions. Those Buddhisattvas who are fully purified uh, the mental afflictions and realize the selfless nature of the person. Nirmanaka appears through the purification of karma. When the gross karmas are fully purified, when 
Buddhist was uh, on the uh, part of accumulation, part of application, then can see the Buddha Nirmana Kaya. So, no? so this is the 20th chapter uh, dealing with the result which is perfect Buddhahood from the jewel ornament of liberation, the wish fulfilling gem of the noble teachings. Uh, part six means the, from the first chapter or from the introduction. Uh, the activities. The activities are benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thought. Chapter 21, activities to Buddha. First, cultivating the mind of enlightenment. Now, through all the causes and conditions, one gets the opportunity to cultivate bodhicitta. Then, in the middle, practicing the teachings and teachings, teachings, uh, teachings and uh, and the path, and eventually, so I'm practicing the practicing the teachings. I can say, should say, uh, teachings onto the path. I think it's good. Something's missing. The path. So you see, then after being cultivated bodhicitta, then you train in the uh, aspiration bodhicitta training. And after that, we follow in the uh, action bodhicitta training through the six parameters, step by step. Um, and eventually, uh, at the end, attaining the result of Buddhahood, just we finish that. Um, then the result is attain Buddhahood, which means free from all the suffering and the state, the total, permanent peace, harmony, joy. Uh, see, all these are done for the sole purpose, only purpose of dispelling suffering and establishing the happiness of all sentient beings. So not single uh, instant thinking for oneself, no? only for all other sentient beings. No? Then when one attains the Buddhahood, there are no conceptual thoughts or effort. Therefore, can Buddhas manifest any benefit for sentient beings? So ask this question now. Now Buddha is free from all elaboration, conceptual thoughts totally is in the Dharmakaya. No? So how Buddha can benefit sentient beings? No? Without, now answers here, without conceptual thoughts or effort, Buddha's manifest benefit for sentient beings spontaneously and unceasingly. The reason because the Bodhicitta is fully perfect. All the causes and conditions are fully accomplished. No, like when you before yeah before you turn the engine, it takes time. Once the engine is uh, on, then it just flows effortlessly like that. Um, the explanation of how this occurs summary. The body of the Buddha benefits sentient beings without conceptual thoughts. Likewise, the speech and mind also benefit sentient beings without conceptual thoughts. These three comprise the activities of a Buddha. So this, through these three, will explain how Buddha benefits sentient beings. Now, benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thoughts by Body, Buddha's body, speech, or mind is explained with examples from the unsurpassed Tantra, Udra Tantra. Say now the quotation say, 
like Indra from that uh, Uttara Tantra, like Indra, drum, clouds, Brahma, the sun, a wishful feeling gem. Uh, Tathagata is like an echo and likewise space and earth. If you need some questions, please do this translation question. No, I'll read again uh, from the Uttara Tantra's quotation. Like Indra, comma, drum, comma, clouds, comma, Brahma, comma, the sun, comma, a wish-fulfilling gem, comma, Tathagata is like an echo, and likewise space and earth. So that's the uh, translation. You know? There are so how many? Indra, drum, cloud, Brahma, the sun, wish-fulfilling gem, Tathagata is like an echo, and this echo, space, earth. So there's nine. See. So through these nine examples will give us a clear picture uh, without conceptual thoughts, effort, uh, how Buddha benefit the sentient beings. Now, Indra, that activities of the body appearing as Indra. Uh, Indra is the the 33 walls, the king or king of the 33 all gods. This is a simile for how the Buddha's body benefits sentient beings without conceptual thought. For example, Indra king, Indra the king of gods abide in a victorious place. Such a uh, a lavish, a luxurious uh, palace, no? with the retinue of goddesses. That palace has the nature of clear and clean lapis lazuli. I think this is just here, lapis lazuli, as uh, it's, 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 uh, in, in, in Sanskrit we have binduria, you know? the wishful feeling jewel, lapis lazuli. And because of that, uh, Indra's image is ref reflected out, outside the palace uh, on the, this uh, wish fulfilling jewel, uh, reflects his palace, all the enjoyments and retinues. You know? So that is seen by the people on the earth. From the earth, man and woman see the reflection of Indra with all his enjoyment. So they are so inspired. They are so kind of attracted their mind, wishing that we wish we have this kind of great enjoyment, wealth, and so forth. And they say the aspiration prayers, and they're also keeping the moral ethics. Um, so saying uh, aspiration prayers that they may also be born there quickly and make effort to develop virtues for that purpose. So as mentioned, practicing the. <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, Nune fasting uh, retreat, keeping the eight precepts, so forth. By that, they are born there after that, because the result of that, uh, they are practice. The appearance of the reflection has no conceptual thought. So, interest uh, and his retinues, enjoyment, all the reflection on the lapis lazuli has no any conceptual thoughts to benefit or not. 
no thought or movement. Uh, yet uh, their reflections appear on that ground, then the people are inspired you know, to achieve that state. Likewise, those who enter into the great purpose, meditating and so forth, would see the body of the perfect Buddha. So that means, let's uh, say, Buddha, which is marked by major and minor signs, manifest various activities, walking, standing, Buddha, you know, and sitting, sleeping, giving Dharma teachings, being ob uh, observed in the meditation, and so forth. By seeing them, they develop devotion and motivation, and then in order to achieve Buddhahood, they engage in its cause. Because by seeing Buddha, they develop such a great devotion, how much peace, serenity they can achieve. No? Uh, Buddha's body has no any that conceptual thoughts to help or not. But by seeing Buddha, they are inspired. Oh, it's a motivation. And then, in order to achieve Buddhahood, they engage its cause, the cultivation of bodhicitta and so forth. And they eventually achieve it. Eventually, they attain Buddhahood. The appearance of that Buddha has no conceptual thoughts or movement. Oh, it is said in the Uttara Tantra, Ansarpas Tantra. Just as the reflection of the form of the King of Gods appears in the clear lapis lazuli ground, so also does the reflection of the King of the Mighty Sage, means Buddha. Form appears in the clear ground which is being minds in the mind, the ground mind of the sentient beings uh, in that appears Buddha's form and inspire to become Buddha. So this is the body benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thought. Uh, next, activities of uh, speech, like the drum of the gods. So this is a simile for how the speech of Buddha benefits sentient beings without conceptual thoughts. For example, above the palace of the victorious gods, the drum of the gods, which is called the holding the power of Dharma, established through the power of the gods' previous virtuous action. Now, without conceptual thought, the drum reminds the drum reminds the heedless gods. In the, in the in the guard realms, the gods are so much kind of fully, fully kind of indulge in their uh, enjoyments. So that's as uh, reminds the heedless gods by sounding the dharma that. So dharma makes this, uh, the drum makes this sound. All composite phenomena are impermanent. All phenomena are without self. All the afflicted states are of the nature of suffering. And all the cessations are peace. So these, you know, statements making sound from that drum. Now in the Uttara Tantra, uh, is, is, this is the mention. It is said, through the power of the God's former goodness, the Dharma drum in the divine realm, without effort, location, mind, I think it should not say mental, mind, form, or concept, Thoughts. Exhort all the uncaring gods over and over again with its drops, drops of 
in permanent suffering, no self, and peace. So when that makes sound, the gods were, oh, we are too much in this. We are so uh, indulged in this desire wall. So they bring back their mindfulness. You know? So likewise, even though there's no effort or conceptual thought, the speech of the Buddha manifests the teachings depending on the disposition of the fortunate ones. Whatever Buddha gives teaching, the teaching, this Buddha sound, has no conceptual thoughts. Even though different levels of the teachings are taught. It is said, like this, all the um, all pervading Dhammakaya's emptiness is without effort and so on. Yet his Buddha speech permeates all beings without exception. Teaching, teaching the noble doctrine to those of God good fortune. So this is speech benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thought. Uh, next, activities of mind like a cloud. This is similarly for how the wisdom mind, Buddha's wisdom mind, benefits sentient beings without conceptual thought. Now this is explanation. For example, in the summer, now here in, in I think Malaysia doesn't matter, <laughs> mm, in other places, in the summer, clouds gather in the sky without effort, causing uh, then uh, crops and so on to grow, means from the cloud, rains, rain down. So the rain causes crops to grow, crops and so forth to grow perfectly through the rain falling see, on the ground without conceptual thought. The cloud has no any thoughts, so I will cause the I will cause the rain, and then rain will bring the all the crops. They have no any this kind of thoughts. No. It is said in the Uttara Tantra, rainy season clouds continually and effortlessly downpour vast amount of water onto the earth and are the cause for good and bountiful crops. So this is the quotation. Likewise, the activities of the wisdom mind ripen trainees crop of virtue through the rainfall of Dharma, all different, different uh, profound and vast teachings of rainfall of Dharma without conceptual thought. It is said in that same text, likewise, cloud of compassion pervades to all the sentient beings without any conceptual, conceptualization. Ran, ran down the water of the vic, victor's noble teachings and caused the harvest of virtue. And then uh, every individual who are interested study, practice, and get so much benefit and realize the teaching at in Buddhahood, harvest of virtue for sentient beings. This is the wisdom mind benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thought. Okay. Next is uh, like Brahma, the, the God King in the foam wall, the first stage of the foam wall. You know? For example, without moving from the Brahma palace, from that where the Brahma, the God, in, this, in his palace, the Brahma king of the gods can be seen in all the god realms, like in the TV, you see. From one TV station, then thousands of TV appears. So from that garden, then all the other garden, they see the Brahma. You know? <coughs> so, 
that runs. Likewise, Buddha, while not moving from the Dhammakaya, is always in the meditative state, equipoise in the Dharma Dhatu, which is the nature of the Dhammakaya. Then from that state, then Buddha benefits all trainees, Dharma practitioners, who need to be, who need to be trained by manifesting the 12 deeds in the like, say, the Nirmanakaya from the heaven to Shita, then uh, uh, born to the world, you know, <coughs> 12 deeds and so forth. Thus it is said in the Uttara Tantra, without effort and without leaving the Brahma heaven, the Brahma, Brahma is an divine abode, can manifest his presence to all the God realms. Similarly, without ever departing from the Dharmakaya, the great victor, the Buddha, effortlessly manifests his emanation in any sphere to the fortunate, in any place, without any obstruction, impediment, uh, the, these individuals can get the benefit from Buddha. Uh, the next, like the sun, example of the sun, for example, the radiant light of the sun opens uh, when the sun rises from the east, then this, the power of the sun it opens lotuses and so forth, means then many other trees, crops uh, cause to ripen because of the heat. An infinite diversity of flowers at one time, all this at one time, without conceptual thought. The sun doesn't have any thoughts to open the lotus flower and so forth. Likewise, the radiant light of the Dharma opens the virtuous lotus of, uh, lotus of the mind of infinite families, as many as they need to be trained uh, in, like I said, in the three vehicles. All are received the Dharma teachings, you know, infinite families and dispositions of trainees well without conceptual thought and without effort. It is said in the Uttar Tantra, the sun without ideation by its own light radiation simultaneously makes lotuses bloom and other things ripen, other trees and crops and so forth ripen uh, similarly, without adhesion, the Tathagata sun, Tathagata's like sun, pours forth his rays of noble Dharma, uh, different level of the Dharma teachings, onto those lotuses who are being to be trained, you know, or in other words, uh, the image of the sun is simultaneously reflected in all clear water vessel at one time. This is a very good you know, uh, simile or say example. When sun rise from the east, there's only one sun, but on the, on the ground, they can have hundreds and thousands of pounds, legs, small legs. All those legs or pounds, the, the sun, as soon as the sun rises from the east, the reflection appears to all without effort. Oh, see, no matter how many, hundreds and thousands of pounds and legs. No, say vessel at one times. Likewise, the Buddha is 
uh, simultaneously reflect in all the pure vision training. So they can have hundreds of thousands of the training or practitioners. Everybody received Buddha's blessing without effort. So because Buddha has no limit, there's no, there's no any limitation, no, free from all the elaboration. Oh. So same. It is said in the Uttar Tantra, due to this, the infinite reflection of the sun of the Sugata appears in all the water vessel of pure trainings simultaneously. So we don't need to think maybe Buddha bless this maybe better to this person and then not so much me, you know. Or maybe Lama gets a little better blessing than me, you know. <laughs> You know, or the you know, our teacher Abbot can maybe they get a better blessing than me. It's not that kind of. But it's impartial. No. Buddha wants uh, to come. Buddha, Buddha is free from unbiased. See, so Buddha says, um, Buddha won't think this is a Buddhist, I will bless more. And this not Buddhist, I will not bless. No. <laughs> you see, in Buddha's mind, every session is equal. Because equally developed loving kindness, compassion, and practice bodhicitta, and perfected that. No. Uh, Buddhisattvas would attend the Bhumi and small insect under the ground. For the Buddha's mind, are equal. There's no special treat to the Buddhists of the ten bumi and not kind of put aside the the insect under the ground. So this is we should see how Buddha's mind and we practice that way, try our practice. Uh, the next, like the wish fulfilling jewels, for example, even though the wish fulfilling jewel has no conceptual thought to give or not to give, it manifests whatever one needs. It manifests means it manifests the anything needed to others from that jewel one needs, if one prays to it. Uh, that's the how wish fulfilling jewel. Or when you have money, you can buy anything. The money has no any thoughts to buy this or that. But it helps you to buy anything what you need. Mm. Likewise, depending on the Buddha, Buddha accomplishes all the purpose associated with the various wishes of hearers and so forth. So, so Buddha, when Buddha gives teachings, depending to the needs of the individuals, there are some Sharavakas who need Dharma teachings, they get their benefit. Partik Buddha, Buddhisattva, um, without any uh, say, bias. Buddha won't say, I establish this to the Arahat. I establish this to Partik Buddha. I establish this to Buddhahood. Buddha don't have, doesn't have this kind of uh, bias uh, thoughts. Simply give the teachings and then these uh, practitioners or trainees they receive the teachings so that uh, there's no any conceptual thoughts to help or not but by receiving teachings they get that benefit see mm -hmm. it is said in the Uddha Tantra a wish fulfilling gem though talked free uh, 
fulfills simultaneously all the wishes of those within its sphere of activities. So, who should be feeling jewel just around there? Anybody who needs anything, they, they receive that. And who should be feeling jewel has no thoughts or efforts. Likewise, though those varying expression here, various teachings, all the levels of the vehicles, they receive teachings. When rely on, on the Hushwe feeling Buddha, Buddha as a Hushwe feeling, he does not so conceive, uh, I should give to this, this teaching, to this, this thing, to that, doesn't have that kind of duality thoughts, you know. So likewise, here now, next, an echo, space, and earth. These are not explained now here, but you know, are similes for benefiting sentient beings without conceptual thoughts. When you go to the Rocky Mountain, so you shout, and the echo will reflect. When you say, hello, how are you? And the echo will say, hello, how are you? When you say, good morning, it will say, good morning. It was, uh, if you say, oh, you are a little strange, the echo will say, you are still strange. <laughs> so all the echo has no any conceptual thoughts to say this or that. It's just an echo. This example is in our life also, you see. We communicate, we are communicating. It's just an echo. When you, when you meet your friend, so oh, today I, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to meet you. And the friend will say, yes, I'm also very happy to meet you. <laughs> you know, you share an echo back and forth, you see. And then when you see somebody you dislike, and you say something bad things, and that person will echo you back. You know? No? It's all reflection. That's what's called. So see everything as an echo. So no essence. So you can go to the mountain and echo. If you cry, the echo will cry. If you sink, the echo will sink. An echo has no conceptual thoughts, no effort. And space, the whole space, sky, no, there's no space is high or low, big or small. Space is freedom from all this. Space has no any thought. So I want to be high or low, big or small. But space is the space that make, make, make a space to build houses. We move, fly, aeroplane, all. So space makes all this space, but no conceptual thoughts. Um, and the earth, you see now, earth is such, see, it's the basis foundation of all this planet. No? Trees to, to grow, crops to grow, water to flow. No? We, we all survive because this the earth. No? But the earth has no any conceptual thought grow, not to grow. No? Look at this. Earth is real wish granting jewel. Everybody survives because of the earth. So how the earth 
no, brings the benefit without effort, without conceptual thoughts. So this we can apply, so just see how Buddha's activities are manifest without the thoughts, without the effort. So this one section. Now for our bodhicitta practice, we take ex, uh, like the, we take earth as an example. As the earth benefit sentient beings, no? equally human beings, non-human beings, animals, insects, no? birds, how much the earth gives to the no sentient beings. So meditate our bodhicitta like the earth. May I be useful like the earth. May I be useful no to all the sentient beings. Like the four elements. Without the air, we cannot stay even one second. Without the fire, we cannot be alive. Without the water, without the earth, the four elements. Everybody who has a body survive by these four elements. So may my bodhicitta is like these four elements. A source of peace, source of happiness. So this last this paragraph is for our bodhicitta practice. Oh, look at this, meditate. On your drive, you see it, all the beautiful tree, flowers there, and legs, water. So reflect our bodhicitta to bring happiness. We just know people human beings out of our greed due to lack the reckless greed we destroy no? but still the earth the four elements supply what we need no? so look at this how much we are creating the cause of suffering to ourselves and others. Oh, develop great wisdom, compassion, and we practice the bodhicitta. So, he said, space benefiting sensation means without concept of thought. This is the 21st chapter dealing with the activities of the Buddha from the jewel ornament of liberation, the wish fulfilling gem of the noble teachings. The jewel ornament of liberation, the wish fulfilling gem of noble teaching and explanation of the stage of the path, means the Lamrim stage of the path, Lamrim of the Mahayana vehicle was composed by physician Sonam Renche Gampopa at the request of Bande, it's a Vande. Here we wrote it's a B, it's a V, Vande, Dharma Chap. Dharma Chap act, acted as script, right, secretary. The wish fulfilling jewel of the precious Dharma manifests for the benefit of all sentient beings without conceptual thought. By the merit of your transcription, may all sentient beings achieve the supreme enlightenment. Also look at this book, you know, which Kambupa wrote 
was over 900 years during this time, how many people got benefit? The book doesn't have a thought, conceptual thought to help others, but by reading, how many got benefit? So this is the name, which people in jewel is real, no? Which people in jewel, the jewel ornament of liberation, which we which we feel in gem of the noble teaching. See, so we uh, started first day the jewel on the liberation, which will be gem of the noble teachings by Kampopa. And then we started paying homage, posted to the noble majority in youthful form. I pay homage to the victorious ones, their followers, the damn whole the Holy Dharma to Lama who are their foundation, this noble teaching which is like the wish fulfilling jewel will be written for the benefit of myself and others by depending on the kindness of Mila and Lord Atisha so forth. So we are fully completed. Bodhicitta, conceptual thought, or reflection of Buddha's infinite mind? Both. When you cultivate yourself, if you have not realized Bodhicitta is conceptual thought, I want to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of sentient beings. Once you realize, then it's a Buddha's mind. <laughs> <laughs> 